Majestic Major, a model aircraft project, part three. An unusual servo malfunction, looking at my Spectrum DX7 radio control system, checking the contents of my old flight box and finding something interesting in the back of a cupboard. The other day, when I was testing old servos, using the servo test function on my transmitter, a really strange fault showed up. Watch the servo on the right hand side. Instead of moving back and forth proportionately to the position of the stick on the transmitter, it just slowly rotated in one direction, with not much strength either. So it's definitely into the bin with that one. This is a Spectrum DX7 radio transmitter, and this is currently sending a 2.4 GHz signal to the radio receiver, which in turn moves the servos relative to the stick positions. Well, it did initially, but then it stopped working, and the lights on the receiver went out. This DX7 system requires something called a bind plug, which allows the transmitter to be locked to the receiver. But for some reason it was locked to the receiver, and now it isn't, so I don't know what's going on here. I unplugged and replugged all of the connectors, but it made no difference. It was completely non-functional. The Spectrum DX7 system needs something called a bind plug fitting into the circuit. Quite a while ago I made a video which showed in great detail how to bind a DX7 transmitter to a receiver. Thankfully I didn't have to watch that, I could remember how to do it. The problem is though, over time I've lost the bind plug. I think I only had one. It's no big deal, I can soon make up another one from some old bits and pieces. It's still annoying though that you need this tiny little part to make everything go, and I don't know why it was binding, then it didn't bind. But now it's completely non-functional, and if I was down on the flying field, or at the boating lake, instead of flying my model plane, or sailing my model boat, I would have to mess about rebinding the DX7 to the receiver. I think that modern versions of 2.4 gig radio bind automatically, but this one doesn't. The point is though, my Futaba 9 Zap just connected to the frequency it was set to with a matching receiver and worked fine from the outset. Once I was at a model boat rally with quite a lot of boats sailing at the same time and all of a sudden two of the boats decided to change controllers. Both of these boats were completely out of control on the water. When the owners finally got them back in I had a look and both were using Futaba 2.4 GHz systems. I'm going to stick to this, it's an old technology but it works perfectly, and the quality of this transmitter is second to none. In fact I've just bought another one of these from a friend of mine, I'm going to use it to operate this model yacht. It's a quarter scale laser yacht. I've had this model yacht for quite a few years, and when I took it out of its bag I was surprised to find how yellow the plastic had gone. I'm going to have a quick look inside it. This resealable hatch just peels off, and inside is a completely flat, no good at all, Spectrum battery. So it's into my box of redundant batteries, which I will dispose of at the local supermarket, where they have a safe battery disposal area. This receiver fastened to the wooden board, and the 6 volt high power battery was the system that I fitted to the yacht when I used to sail it. And with a battery of this power, I could sail all afternoon without any fear of it ever going flat. It's a good idea to have high power batteries for yachts because the big sail winch takes a lot of current. And now for something completely different. I found this box right at the back of the cupboard where I keep my radio control equipment. And suddenly I remembered what it was. It is a box full of Trexler pneumatic balloon wheels. These are great things, I really like them a lot. And I was very surprised to find them, I thought I'd thrown them away a long time ago. Surely the rubber must be perished by now. These superb balloon wheels are made in the USA, and I think now they're possibly getting quite expensive. They're really good if you want a soft, bouncy landing, and this is how you use them. You attach the pump that comes with them to the short rubber pipe that connects to the tyre. Then you just squeeze the bulb until the tyre is inflated, but if you go too far, it starts to look really bizarre. Watch this. Oh dear, it's ballooning out of shape. Now it looks like something from the film Roger Rabbit. However, it does say in the instructions that you must not overinflate any given size. If I want a bigger wheel, I need to buy a bigger wheel. 
I really am amazed that the rubber is still in good condition. I love the simple design. Once you've blown up the tyre, all you do is wrap the pipe around the spindle. And if the tyre is a little bit out of shape, you can hold the hub and rotate the tyre around the hub and it puts it right. Look how bouncy they are. I used to have a pair of these fitted to a fun flyer type of model aeroplane. Hang on a minute, I've dropped one on the floor and it's bouncing around the workshop. With a pair of Trexler balloon wheels fitted to the fun flyer, I would hover it near to the ground, then cut the power and drop it onto its wheels, and then it would bounce around on the grass for a while. This is a smaller pair of Trexler wheels that I bought and never used, still in the original pack. And here is another story. The two charred central hubs were the victims of a small fire when I spilt some fuel on the ground around the plane. I modified this toolbox to be a flight box many years ago. I fitted the bracket on the end to hold the transmitter, and inside there are spare propellers, the starter motor and various other things. I found this in one of the top compartments. It's a battery checker, a very useful tool to have. And when I connect it to this battery, it tells me how good it is. This one needs charging. A very useful thing to have, it's switchable between 4.8 and 6 volts for different batteries. Here's the electric starter that I use, and I like this one because it's not very bulky and not very heavy. It's a geared starter. The spanner that I have in my left hand is great because it holds spare glow plugs. And here I've removed a glow plug from the spanner, and I'm testing it. This one works okay. I thought it would be a good idea to check the glow plug in the OSFS60 engine, and this seems good too. The very bright lighting in the workshop that I use for making the videos makes the glowing coil look a bit dull, but it isn't. All I need now are some servos and another battery. The battery lurking behind the transmitter is going back in the yacht from whence it came. I look forward to getting the second Zap 9 with the throttle on the left to operate the yacht. I'll be picking that up from a friend of mine later this week. And that's it for this video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this episode interesting. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.